Space, the final frontier. Musk wants us on the red planet building the next branch of human civilization. Which brings us to a big question. How do we power the economic engine to drive uh, that scale of interplanetary commerce? Today we get the answer. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again and welcome to Rock Logic. I am your host, Sean Kenny, and we have an amazing show for you today. We live in strange and amazing times. The fact that we have private space companies developing reusable rockets for space exploration is awesome. NASA plans on having humans return to the moon within five years. SpaceX plans on sending humans to the red planet uh, before this decade is out. Throughout the next 30 years, we could see thousands or even millions settling on Mars to make it their new home. But how would you even power a civilization on Mars? And what could you do to promote commerce, at least to the scale needed to support a colony? Why do we even want to go to Mars in the first place? Mars, at face value, may look barren and inhospitable, but it has a great deal of value once you scratch the surface. Though the red planet is certainly much smaller than Earth, its surface area is equivalent to all of Earth's continents combined. So it has a great deal of living space that we can exploit. It has water beneath the soil, and it has carbon dioxide in about 95% of its atmosphere. Both are necessary uh, to support human life. It has a 24-hour day, which is very useful for growing plants and maintaining a circadian rhythm for human beings. In addition to all of this, it has a complex geological history, which is allows Mars to develop all the metal ore and resources uh, to support a thriving technological civilization. Mars seems to have a lot going on for it, but again, the question is why? Why would thousands of human settlers want to leave and settle this planet? It certainly looks like crap compared to Earth. Well, in the words of Robert Zubrin, Mars will never become a utopia. Mars is going to be a lab. It's going to be a place where things are tried out. Uh, a place where the best and brightest that our planet has to offer or, uh, will explore and discover. Being millions of miles away from Earth, they will not be shackled by the laws or governing bodies that constrain that raw talent. They will be free to develop new technologies and inventions that will make their home more livable and prosperous. Those same technologies could find their way to Earth in the form of patents. Those patents, in turn, uh, could have various applications that could benefit human life here on Earth and continue to fund further economic development on Mars. First, let's get the hard stuff out of the way. You need energy, because without it, you can't do anything. You can't make food or water, you can't make air, and you can't recycle waste. If you do none of these things, people are gonna die. Mars is completely devoid of fossil fuels like oil, coal, and natural gas, so that's out of a question. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is about 1% that of Earth, which rules out wind energy as being reliable enough to power an outpost. Solar is a viable option on the red planet. However, its distance from the sun makes it less than a quarter as effective as it is on Earth. So you would need to make four times as many panels to generate the same amount of electricity. With all that taken into consideration, we have one viable option left, and that's nuclear fission. The truth be told, it's always been considered a viable option by various space agencies uh, due to the density that nuclear fuel has in relation to how much it can generate. Uh, for years, NASA has used nuclear power in robotic space exploration. Voyager, Cassini, New Horizons all use nuclear power in some form or another. The Mars Curiosity rover uh, runs on radioisotopic thermal generators that uses the decay from plutonium-238 to keep the batteries warmed up and charged. It's been there since 2012, and for eight years it's been collecting data and sending images in glorious quality. On July 30th of this year, NASA launched the Perseverance rover to Mars, which is of similar design, and is being accompanied by the Ingenuity, a drone capable of short flights in Mars's thin atmosphere. Great stuff, but to meet the needs of a Martian outpost, we need to generate a lot more power. Thankfully, NASA and the U.S. Department of Energy have been working on the Kilopower Reactor Program. Since 2015, the two agencies have been working uh, on the development and testing of a nuclear power source that can generate between 1 and 10 kilowatts of electricity continuously for about 12 to 15 years without having to be refueled. In addition to its expected reliability as a power source, it's also being tested to deal with the extremely harsh conditions one would come to expect from a manned or unmanned space exploration. NASA anticipates an initial crew of four to six astronauts would require about 40 kilowatts of power or four reactors to generate the necessary amount of power to sustain them throughout a long duration stay on Mars. Everything from life support, waste management, even growing produce can be uh, 
accommodated using this system. We can even produce rocket fuel by extracting CO2 from Mars's atmosphere and combining it with a little hydrogen from water. Doing so would absolutely be necessary in order to achieve routine round trip flights between our two planets. So there you have it. We're developing the tools to explore new worlds. The means to sustain future explorers on the red planet are within our grasp. But what happens when you expand on what kilopower can do? What happens when you start shipping molten salt reactors to Mars? Well, then that's when the real fun begins. Even a small reactor in the 10 to 20 megawatt range could sustain thousands while also producing enough process heat to conduct a number of industrial processes. You can smelt materials uh, to make more habitats, or even domes and artificial ecosystems to support various forms of plant and animal life. You can mine the planet to extract various materials to make all of your own tools and equipment. Now, this is assuming you're using a simple IMSR that runs on uranium fuel. Uh, if we move to thorium power for a lifter, you could produce enough plutonium-238 to power long-distance treks across the Martian landscape. If we mined all the material needed to construct them, we could even scale that power usage on a planetary scale, powering uh, maglev trains between Martian cities. One day, and this is getting really ambitious, we could use Lifter to power machines that could start terraforming the surface of Mars to make it more habitable for future generations. I won't go into too much detail into this episode, but I will conclude with this. Nuclear energy is necessary for the long-term exploration and settlement of Mars. More efficient technologies like Lifter give us the ability to turn Mars into an industrial powerhouse where future technologies can be developed to benefit uh, humanity for hundreds or even thousands of years. With everything that's been going on lately, it's easy to have a dystopian view of the future. But this future isn't set, and humanity is at the precipice for achieving not just a bright future, but a future worth living for. I'm your host, Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hey, thank you so much for uh, watching today's episode. Uh, we're a new podcast, so we really appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to it. My producer, Jessica, says that I'll get a cookie uh, for every new subscriber we get. Maybe if I'm good enough, she'll let me outside. Is that good? Yeah, all right. Hmm. That's good. That's a good cooking.